morning, Essex. Great to see you all here for worship today. We are glad that you have joined us. Welcome to you who are watching on Facebook. Welcome to you who are joining us uh, on YouTube. My name is Dave Stanbaugh, and it is so good to be with you uh, this morning. In your bulletin, you will see a, a couple of announcements. Um, we sent out an email earlier this week uh, letting you know about uh, the passing of Brian Jobson. Uh, we uh, are so sad during this time. S Susan is so grateful for your prayers and your support. You'll see that there's a memorial service planned for the 11th of February. That's this Saturday. Uh, that'll be at 11 o'clock. Also got word uh, last night, some of you may know Bill McCann uh, passed away last evening uh, as well. That was posted on some social media and some folks uh, let me know about that first thing this morning. So I wanted to pass that on to you uh, as well. You will see that our communion table uh, is set up this morning. If you are with us for perhaps the first time this morning, uh, we wanna make sure that you know that you are welcome to share communion with us. You don't need to be uh, a member of our denomination, a member of our church, uh, by the simple virtue of your presence with us. Uh, you are welcome to share what the table uh, offers you uh, this morning. We also have a welcome to worship book uh, as well. There uh, is, that will be in our lobby. If you are here and would like to let us know that you are here with us, we'd love to have you um, uh, sign that for us. Uh, Rick, what do you have in your hand? Why don't you tell us about that quick? All Saints Church, Valentine, Valentine, pop-up shop, Saturday, February 11th, 10 a.m. to noon. Great. Thanks so much. Um, this Thursday, a number of you have expressed interest in uh, joining our church uh, through membership. We're going to have a very informal gathering on Thursday, February 16th uh, at 7 p.m. And then new members uh, will be received on Sunday, February 19th as well. And this year we will be having an Ash Wednesday service uh, at 7 p.m. We will begin Lent with that Ash Wednesday service at 7. And beforehand we'll have a soup and bread supper. Uh, we had a wonderful potluck um, a couple Fridays ago, so we want to keep that spirit going. Uh, maybe a bring your own soup and bread kind of supper. We'll do that beforehand in Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. And speaking of soup and bread, speaking of physical nourishment, this morning we are going to be talking about spiritual nourishment and the number of different ways that bread is used as a metaphor in the scriptures. We read in a number of different places about how bread serves to remind us uh, where true life comes from. We read that we don't live by bread alone. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is referred to as bread, and we are invited to eat that bread, but bread uh, is also used as a metaphor for idleness as well. And so both our scripture reading and our first hymn of the day will speak of the power of feeding on the bread of heaven. So would you join me this morning as we rise together in body or spirit? Number 18 in your black hymnal, guide me, oh my great redeemer.
bulletin along with the announcements. You will see those who we want to keep in our thoughts and prayers. Certainly uh, Susan's family, the McCann family as well. Are there other names that you would like to lift up this morning? Are there other concerns that you have that uh, weigh you down, that are heavy on your heart, that you would like to share with your family of faith this morning? Aaron. Hi. So um, a few weeks ago, I shared about a couple of folks in our lives that needed your prayers uh, for cancer. Unfortunately, uh, the teacher that I worked with did pass away. So we're asking for prayers for his spirit and his family during this time. But on a positive note, our other friend, Donna, who we're also asking for prayers because she has uh, uh, type of lymphoma, right? She is um, in Um, she is awaiting a bone marrow transplant, transplant so that she can have long-term health. Uh, so we're asking for prayers for that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. Um, last Sunday morning, my uncle, uh, Michael, another Michael, um, passed away from, I believe it was cancer. They kept quiet, but his prayers for his family has been behind two hours and six grandchildren. It seems as though uh, this week we have a, a number of those prayer requests for folks who have passed away. Um, it reminds us, does it not, of the frailty and the fragility of, of, of life. And Ash Wednesday is, is one of those reminders as, as well if you've been to an Ash Wednesday service. One of the things we say during the imposition of ashes is, remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. And that is a reminder to us to make precious, is it not, all of those moments, all of the time that we do have with our friends uh, and loved ones, um, to tell them we love them, to offer uh, our love and our forgiveness, to, to be a witness of the light and love of God in all that we think, say, and do. As we remember these prayer requests and the ones that are also in your bulletin, let's bow our heads together and spend just a few moments as we pray this morning. Loving God, this morning we are mindful of the brevity of life as many of our friends and loved ones pass away. We are reminded just how short and brief life is. And so we remember all those we have named this morning we pray that you would comfort the families. We pray that you would strengthen those who mourn and be with those who have lost loved ones in a mighty and powerful way. Be with us to bind up our wounds, to comfort us in our pain as we come before you in prayer, lifting to you the joys and concerns in our life. Loving God, we rejoice in the power of your love and we celebrate the togetherness we share in Christ as your grace continues to draw us together. So this morning we ask you to open our hearts and open our spirits and open our lives so that we might hear your word for us this day. Lord, we're mindful of the, all those we know who seek healing in body, mind, or spirit, so now we silently lift up to you all those who have asked for our prayers this day. Now, 
together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now as the choir gets in place for our I would like to thank you in advance uh, on behalf of all those who are the recipients of the ministries of our church. Everything we do is supported by your generous gifts. So as the ushers come forward, we will be able to you. Oh, oh, oh. 
us pray. Good and gracious God, we offer these gifts in response to your goodness and grace. May they be used to feed hungry hearts and thirsty souls as we do your work in the world. Amen. You may be seated. You will see in your bulletin this morning that our scripture reading is actually going to be three uh, separate passages uh, as you hear them. You'll, you'll hear the beatitude. Uh, you'll hear that connecting <coughs> scripture that connects the beatitude. And then you'll also hear a, a, a brief passage from the Gospel of John which is sort of Jesus' commentary and can help us understand this idea, this powerful metaphor of bread and why it's such a great imagery of spiritual nourish for us. This is the gospel according to Matthew. Good morning. <laughs> Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. And this is how you should pray. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And this is the gospel according to John. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is God who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Before we get started, what a difference 24 hours makes. <laughs> Folks, I've been on this planet a long time. Longer than some of you, not as long as others. But I watched the Weather Channel yesterday, and they called yesterday a once in a generation cold snap. It was negative 20 wind chill in, S in uh, uh, Guilford yesterday. I checked here. It was pretty much the same. I'm really glad I wasn't working on top of Mount Washington yesterday. <laughs> Did everybody see that? Yes. Negative 104 degrees. Thank you, scientists. <laughs> and with a negative 20 degree wind chill, uh, the deacons decided to postpone setting up for communion. However, Cindy and Jim and Peter and Connie, before she got the message, were here helping to set up communion. Can we give our deacons a big round of applause this morning? For <laughs> Thank you guys. And the only reason I want you to applaud for them is because I stayed in bed. <laughs> All right. I got the email, yeah, let's cancel. Excellent, that's great. So thank you all. And thank you to Rick as well for checking on the building, making sure the heat was working, making sure our pipes were working. That's fantastic. Thank you guys all so, so much. So you heard in the Beatitudes, this idea of hungering and thirsting for righteousness. The Beatitudes, as I've said a couple times, are going to serve as our outline for the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. We read that in our, we heard that rather, in our, in our first reading. And about a chapter later, we hear this petition in the Lord's Prayer when, when the disciples say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus say, says, pray like this. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And you have to remember in a subsistence society, right? Folks who are just scraping things together, this petition can be seen as a prayer for literal daily bread. That's not necessarily a prayer that, that many of us pray these days because we can go shopping for days. We have freezers that can keep stuff for weeks or months. So we don't really feel a need for literal daily bread perhaps. So, so as, we, as we think about this society in which this prayer came to fruition, you know, perhaps it was kind of modeled, they're based on this idea of manna in the wilderness. Do you remember that story as Israel was going through the wilderness and, and they would be provided literal daily bread or, or manna? That's an idea. As I mentioned, bread is a powerful metaphor in the scriptures. And those of you who have studied Hebrew, uh, show of hands, okay, may know, there's, there's Rick in the back always, may know that Bethlehem, Bethlehem, the Hebrew root, is house of bread. House of bread. And the John passage helps us connect all these great images of, of bread, the beatitude, the prayer for daily bread, in another way because John connects it to communion. John connects this idea of bread and nourishment and hungering and thirsting to communion. There's no Last Supper account in the gospel according to John. You know, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there's a Last Supper and where we actually hear the words uh, that you will hear in a few minutes that we share each and every month about take and eat, this is my body. The gospel of John doesn't have that. But what it does have is John chapter 6. And you just heard a portion of John chapter 6 in, in the reading, but there's a much longer passage where not only does Jesus say, I am the bread of life and give us this bread and we don't want to hunger and thirst anymore, but where Jesus speaks of eating my flesh and drinking my blood. which certainly explains that sort of literal understanding of that section of Christianity that looks at the bread and the cup as the literal body of Jesus. When Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood, my blood uh, the Roman Catholic Church takes that, that very literally and says, this is my, Jesus said it, this, this must be it. And in John chapter six, Jesus says, you know, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. So there's a very literal understanding for the Catholic view that has come to be known as transubstantiation. You guys didn't know you were going to get some history today along with the sermon, right? So we're going to have a little history lesson, a little theology, a little walk through communion rows. So transubstantiation means it was bread and wine, but it becomes the body and blood of Christ, the substance changes from one thing to another. The 16th century Reformation, Anglican, Lutheran, churches of that nature, uh, practice what's known as consubstantiation. So it's Jesus' body and blood, but it's also bread and wine. So the substance, two substances are kind of coexisting. Uh, together. And then the branches of Christianity that, that we are a part of um, typically will see this as maybe a, a memorial meal or a celebration, a remembrance, a meal in remembrance of Jesus where it's more of a metaphorical understanding of Jesus' body and Jesus' bread. It reminds us it causes us to remember that the broken bread and the poured out wine are signs of God's love and forgiveness, which again 
we say each time we celebrate communion. This bread that is broken, this wine that is poured out for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And fascinatingly enough, in that prayer for daily bread, right, we also have that prayer for forgiveness. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And whether you use trespasses or debts or sins, whatever image you're using there, that connection between receiving daily bread is also a prayer for forgiveness as we forgive those who trespass against us. And I, I've said this from time to time, and, and we've talked about this a little bit because we've, we've talked about enemies, right? In the last couple of weeks, we've talked about being peacemakers. How do we do that? Well, this section of the Lord's Prayer, this section of the Sermon on the, Pound, the, Sermon on the Mount, I think is kind of the, I, I often refer to it as the fine print of the gospel. It's sort of those lines that are underneath where we're happy to receive forgiveness from God, right? We're, we're ecstatic when that happens. But then we're told one verse later, as we forgive, as we uh, offer that forgiveness to others. And there's interesting different versions in, in the Matthew version of the Lord's Prayer about daily bread and forgiveness and the Luke version. There, there's a little bit of a difference in the grammar, which is fascinating to me. Matthew sounds like it's past tense, the one that you heard. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Right? That sort of assumes that forgiveness. Forgive us as we have forgiven already our debtors. Luke, in a sense, is a little bit more of an ongoing. Uh, forgive us our sins, in Luke it says, as we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Sort of that ongoing, repeated action. It's almost a lifestyle of forgiveness. And here's the image that I want you to see as you think about what this forgiveness looks like. Imagine this is you. Imagine this is your soul. Okay? And you've got some forgiveness in there, right? But you could use a little more. So imagine the picture of God's love, just pouring water into that cup, okay? <clears throat> pouring water into that cup. And that love and forgiveness doesn't stop, remember? There's nothing that can separate us from God's love, right? So that forgiveness and that love just keeps pouring pouring, pouring into this. Well, what's going to eventually happen? What's going to happen, Rick? It's going to overflow, right? And then down here is everyone's soul that you are close to. Everyone's heart and life that you are close to. The forgiveness that we get from God into this cup overflows from us into the lives of all those around us. And so if we're going to cut that off, right? Say, no, I don't think I can, no, it's not going to work. No, 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 no. You'd almost have to stop God's cup from pouring over into yours because it has to pour out. It has to overflow as we receive that forgiveness from God, our hungering and thirsting for righteousness, right? That's what the Beatitude said, our hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled because God will fill us with those things. God will feed us 
with daily bread. God will pour that forgiveness into us. And so as we share the bread and the cup, we're reminded of God's love. And that as we ask for forgiveness, it is then up to us to share that, to let that cup overflow into the lives of others. And bread and wine have been used to help us remember this beautiful, beautiful imagery. How many of you are high carb, low fat people when you eat? How many of you are high carb, low fat people? Anybody like high carb diet, low fat? How many of you are low carb, high fat? There we go, we got a couple of those. Okay, good, good, good. I've done both. I've tried them both. And they both work. So it's, it's really not that matter of if you're going to have a lot of bread or a little bread. There is what I think good bread and bad bread, right? I grew up. What was the best bread when you were growing up? No, not sourdough. <laughs> Of course not when you were growing up, not when your tastes were refined. What was the best bread growing up? Wonder bread. The choir knows, Rick. Come on. Wonder bread. The best bread growing up. The worst bread you could eat. The worst bread you could eat. But I grew up, and, and a lot of times, you know, I, I remember watching... Uh, uh, the, the, the deacons in our church that I grew up at, cutting up just, you know, those little squares of Wonder Bread, you know? And that's what we would have for communion. There may be a couple there. Is it Wonder? What, what kind is it, Cindy? Do we know? What, what kind of bread is it? Uh, it's Pepperidge Farm. <laughs> it's Petridge Farm. That's wonderful. Now, but we also, we also have some gluten-free options available if that is something uh, that is important to you. And we also, this morning, will have a, a, a beautiful challah bread uh, as well that we will break and, and place. So feel free to take whichever kind of bread you want. I was a big fan, until they just got rid of it, of Trader Joe's seven grain bread. Was delicious. And they're not making that anymore. Uh, how about, uh, Mike's going to know about King's Hawaiian bread. You know, that big, juicy, sweet bread. Uh, which, by the way, has the same ingredients as cake. <laughs> you know? I, I, I noticed. It's basically cake, um, which is delicious. How many of you are familiar uh, with Ezekiel bread? Show of hands. Ezekiel bread. Nobody knows, two people, three people know Ezekiel bread. So the next time you're at your store, a couple people, a couple, a couple more, you know where it comes from? You know why they call it Ezekiel bread? Next time you're at your store, um, what I want you to do, and whether it's, you know, um, Big Y probably has it, but wh wherever you are, take a look at the label of Ezekiel bread. Because what it actually says is Ezekiel Four, nine. And it's based on a verse in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 9, that says this. Take wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and spelt and put them into one vessel and cook them. So it's a recipe for bread from the book of Ezekiel made by a company called Food for Life. Folks, these sermons just preach themselves. <laughs> Food for Life. Jesus says, come on now. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Life. 
literal bread is food for life. It strengthens our bodies, it keeps us strong, it nurtures us, maybe even wonder bread in some way, shape, or form gives us something. If you put a little peanut butter on it. But once bread is consecrated, once bread is prayed over or set apart, the definition of consecration is setting apart. Once this bread is set apart, it becomes bread of life. It becomes the bread of heaven feeding us till we want no more. It nurtures our soul and our spirit and keeps us in shape. Our physical muscles in shape to remember that God loves us and forgives us and that we are called to love and forgive others. It strengthens us to pass on to others what we receive from God. Part of the Episcopal communion service includes these words as part of their consecration of the bread and helps us understand how simple bread can become the bread of life. How it becomes spiritual food. In the Book of Common Prayer, we read the, this is the body of Christ. Take and eat and feed on him in your heart through faith. Gosh, that's a, that's a great image. I tell folks often that while we refer to communion as a meal, you're going to be hungry after church today. <laughs> All right? It's not a meal for your stomach. It's a meal for your spirit. It's a meal for your soul. So as we prepare to share the bread and cup, I'm going to uh, invite you to close your eyes for just a minute. And I want you to imagine and reflect on God's goodness and love for you. I want you to revisit that image of water overflowing out of the cup of your soul into the lives of those around you. I want you to imagine what it, need, what it means to be filled with the bread of life so that you hunger and thirst no more. God be with us as we share this meal together. Be with us as the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Amen. Peace be with you. Let me invite you to turn to those near you and greet them this morning with the peace of Christ as those who are assisting with communion come forward at this time. Once again, let me remind you that if you are a guest with us for perhaps the first time, you are welcome to share this bread and this cup. You are invited 
to receive all that this cup has to offer you uh, this morning. Because as I mentioned, there is nothing, nothing that can separate us from God's love. As the bread comes to you, I'll invite you to hold on to the piece of bread uh, that comes. And then when the ushers return, we will all partake together. And we will also do the same with the cup. With that in mind, let me invite you to bow your heads as we pray together this morning. Blessed are you, Lord God, for you bring forth bread from the earth and you create the fruit of the vine. So we give you thanks and praise because you are good, your mercy endures forever, and our souls find rest in you alone. May this bread and this cup nourish us and sustain us with the power of your spirit so that we might be channels of your love in a broken and hurting world. As we now remember that it was the night in which Jesus was eating the Passover with his disciples that he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to them and said take this all of you and eat this is my body broken for you as often as you do this do it in remembrance of me and in the same way after supper Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. partake together. Thank you. 
cup of salvation. Let us partake together. The prayer of thanksgiving can be found in, hold on one second. The prayer of thanksgiving can be found in your bulletin. Let me invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have nourished us this morning with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May our lives shine brightly with the radiance of your Son as we walk in newness of life. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, number 332 in your black hymnal, as we gather at your table, let's rise together in body or spirit as we sing. seated. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you will be filled. I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never hunger and thirst again. As we gather at your table, as we listen for your word, Help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. May you go in peace this day making love's victory known, sharing with others what you have received from God. May you go in the peace and the comfort and the knowledge of God this day and always. Amen.